Next news out of Texas, USA. Conservatives want to torture a baby by refusing to take her off life support. Obviously, as everyone can tell by the way that the title is written, this is a bit biased. Um, and I do stand on support of, of Hemet Mehta, who wrote this article. A group of pro-life activists in Texas are doing everything they can to make the suffering of this 11-year-old child just prolonged. Um, they have taken her case to court, and I'll tell you what's going on with it here soon. Uh, Tinsley Lewis is, a, is an 11-month-old baby who was born with a severe heart defect and lung disease, okay? And there's a children's medical center here in Fort Worth, Texas, um, and they've made it very clear there's nothing they can do to improve her health situation, okay? There's no further treatments, nothing. She is officially, you know, dead, just being just being kept alive on life support. Um, the the author Hemet Meadows says that allowing her to die would be the humane thing to do. That's the same stance that the doctors at the Children's Hospital has taken. Um, but what ended up happening was an anti-abortion activist group got involved here with Tinsley's mother. Okay, and obviously, you know, if if you're a parent to a child, you know this would be a very hard situation to make. And Tinsley's mother does not want to let her daughter go yet. Um, so she has been working with this anti-abortion activist group along with other Texas lawmakers um, who want the girl to be kept alive longer. But a judge ruled in favor of the hospital, effectively saying that they could take off the life support, okay? And the pro-life crowd is furious about it. And it's not just the pro-life crowd, but they are using Tinsley's mother's pain over this decision. Using her to, what? Her uh, pain? Her pain. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a mother is about to lose her daughter. She doesn't want to lose her yet. Right. And they're they're using that as as propaganda, mm. um, you know, showing how how terrible anyone who who wants her dead, showing how her death is just the end of anyone caring about life. Yeah. Um, and it's just not the case. It's, so, yeah, go ahead. I, I wanted to actually speak about this a little bit, being that um, I'm a medical professional. So in addition to what Ali had said about um, the right to life group, it's a Texas right to life, but they're, uh, they're an anti-abortion group. But there's another Texas anti-abortion group, which is the Texas Alliance for Life, which actually supports the law with which the judge ruled that this uh, little girl could be taken off of life support. It's a law of advanced directives in Texas, and it makes them one of the leaders in the country on these kind of laws. And it sets a bioethics committee to decide if, with physicians, if a child's or whomever a patient's uh, condition is what they would consider futile and they are suffering. So this bioethics committee then would make a decision and they usually bring it back to the parents. And oftentimes, if the parents disagree, they can go into counseling. And most of the time, they'll come up with a solution. But if not, they can take it to a judge. And the judge can make that decision. But what's interesting is what's also at issue here is not just the law itself, but what the Right to Life Committee is really focusing on is this 10-day period of sort of reflection that was added into the law saying that you have to give 10 days once the ethics committee rules so as to the parents could potentially move the child to another hospital or find another doctor, set of doctors. And the Texas Right to Life wants this 10-day waiting period removed and wants it made out to six months. And they think that in and of itself is bad to even have that and then also they um are stating that um this uh again as ali said is against life but completely disregarding the doctors who and i want to say this very much so i want to say this out loud physicians nurses any medical professionals have a duty and an obligation to the patient independent of the family members mm. So I think that that, for me, is a big part of this that I don't think people are understanding. Yeah. Because I think that Ali said that the right to life group is sort of commodifying this woman's pain. But I also think that people who insist that this law is wrong are not 
making it about the patient. They're making it about themselves. Mm. I'm going to read the top comment. Is uh, It's actually about the headline. Amanda is saying the headline is absolutely asinine and, and, a great, uh, and a great example of how twisted our news has become. How about devastated parents? Oh, how Amanda is basically suggesting a better title here. Uh, quote, devastated parents want their child to live, unquote. I am not debating what is best for the welfare of the ch of this child, as this is an extremely complicated ethics issue. However, I am fairly certain no political group wants to torture a baby. This is ridiculous. So people don't like the title that Hemad Mehta came up with. What do you guys think? I think it, it, it does show that he has you know an opinion on this right. but i also think devastated mother wants baby to live also shows that you have an opinion like somehow there's people that want this baby to die right. that's not what the doctors want they want to end this child's suffering because as i said their responsibility is to her right so it's before easy. anything else so it's easy to like just like instead of listening to the other side so you could one side like oh you want to this child to you want to torture babies. And the other side could be like, you want to kill babies. <laughs> like, you just simplify it to, um, well, no. Neither side. I think he's, the problem with, this is the problem with religion. Because every everybody wants the best, I think, for the, for the child, no? Um, it's just that some people are dealing with bad information or bad logic. And bad logic plus good intentions could result in babies being tortured for longer right so this is what this is the problem with religious ideas or any other superstition ali what do you think i think no, yes. oh go ahead i was going to say something but go ahead ali uh no it's okay go ahead Rufa. um i think that again there is a religiosity element to it for sure with the texas right to life group mm. but um i think that it's also difficult because it's an emotional level and when people are dealing on an emotional level sometimes that part of their brain is what takes over from them being able to think logically right so and it's scary and it's painful and so it's not just bad logic it's an inability to have control over your emotions so that you can look at things um in a larger perspective and, I think um, that there's a little bit more to that too. Is it's um, it's not about what uh, what is best, but it's also about what can you live with. How can you uh, very live good with point. yourself after you say, okay, uh, let's take my life? It, logically, of course, you know, I can sit here and tell you this. Say my kid gets in a car accident tomorrow or something, and I'm put in this situation. How as a mother am I going to wake up the next morning after saying yes, pull that plug? and go on you know so it's that fear of that unknown it's it's more you know it's what i think if, that's a good point there's that miracle you know and you ended it so it's there's a lot of different aspects to it it's just really hard right, well, you, you know see, actually we need to move on to the next with, thing. Re, but go on i was Not, just gonna nothing. say that it has this um law has actually been used in the reverse by the way there have been situations where the family has wanted to end treatment but doctors have you're absolutely right said no i think this has validity so the point is is that the law is a very interesting and complex law to deal with a very difficult and complex subject that most people i don't think mm. are ready or willing mm. to deal with okay. in their own lives unless they're forced on them like their baby you know being born with a disease okay right. ready to go on all right. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. 
With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.